Hi, it's good to to be back in Bath. Um, this is my second time here. First time was in 2007 or 8, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I flew from Jakarta to London on Friday. It was 16 hours of sitting on the airplanes. Most of the time I was sleeping, but it was around, I think, 11,000 kilometers or something. <coughs> so it was quite far, but I'm so grateful to be here. Um, tonight, I want to open my, I want to share my story. But the story is not about me, just me. But it's a story about what the Lord has done in my life. So it's, he's the star in this story. Um, well, as you see in the screen and people have been mentioned, my name is Tracy Trinita. Um, well, I was actually annoyed at my names because I'm Asian and yet my name is Tracy, it's very American. My mom told me names after a very famous tennis player in the 80s and she really, really adored this um, tennis player. And Trinita, she thinks it's rhyme with the first one. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. my mom from Indonesia, my father from Brazil. Um, um, when I was born, my mom was very young. She was only 19 years old, and my dad was 20. So they're actually not really ready to have me. So what they did is they asked my grandparents from my mom's side to take care of me. So I stayed with my Muslim grandpa and Christian grandma from the age of zero one day until seven years old in Borneo or Kalimantan we call. And at the age of seven, I moved to Bali, the paradise. Yes, if you're a surfer, you will for sure will know about Bali. And it was for me it was it was heaven, but not when I'm in school. The reason why is because at school. Nobody called my name Tracy. Well, if you, if any of you Indonesian in this room, you will know if I say this. People call me by the name Trasi. Trasi means smelly fish, a smelly prawn. And that's what people called me. So, and not only that, because I was always being the tallest in the class, people call me giraffe. People in Indonesia love to make fun of other people. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's part of the culture, I guess. Um, so what happened, like, oh, well, if, if there's Indonesian here, don't feel offended, okay? I'm one of them, too. <laughs> well, people call me by names that are not my real names. People make fun of me for being different. Because I'm not really Western, and yet I'm not really Asian. I'm a man, no, no man's land, basically. So I always feel like an underdog when I was a kid. You know, even though I'm the tallest in the class, I always felt the smallest. I felt unworthy. I felt nobody loved me, nobody cared about me. And it's really, really weird to have that kind of feeling growing up. So I struggle in my preteens life. I struggle to like me, let alone others to like me. Well, one day at the age of 14, 13 to 14, my life about to change 180 degrees. When I was 14, my mom sent my photo to a local magazine. In Indonesia, we have this, like back then, we have these three major magazines. And these three major magazines have a competitions, like a modeling competitions. And every year, they'll pick just the best three. And the number one will be instantly famous for that one whole year. TV will make a report about that person. They'll be in a magazine, they'll be in a newspaper. Back in the 90s, like whoever won, it'll be like, you know, the, the star of the year. My mom sent my photo to that magazine and I was one of the 15 finalists and I won the first place. When I went back to Bali, all of a sudden, People who are mean to me call my name, Hi Tracy! I'm like, oh, they know my name. What happened? The whole time they called me something else. And my teacher, my killer teacher, becomes so nice to me. He's like, Pop, oh sorry, I said Indonesian word. Sir, I forgot to actually make my homework. Oh, it's okay, tomorrow, bring it tomorrow. I'm like, wow, this never happened to me before. And all of a sudden, people who are so mean to me before, they become so nice to me. And 
that's not yet, that's not like the ultimate transformation of my life. Because the same year, I was offered to actually join another competition. But this one, comp this competition is a different one. This one's actually the international competitions. If anybody ever heard names Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelista, Giselle Bündchen, these models are from these competitions. They're the winner of these competitions. It's called Elite Model Look, or back then they called the look of the year. It's by the agency called Elite Model Management. There are like hundreds of them in many in hundred countries. They establish in many, many countries. They're based in New York City. So these competitions happen for the first time in Indonesia. I don't really want to do it because I'm already happy with my life. It changed me already. But my mom told me, like, this is different. You want to give it a try? So long story short, my mom sent my photo again. And I go to Jakarta again. I was part of the finalist. And again, I won the first. They sent me to Seoul, Korea, represent Indonesia. 65 countries, 77 contestants. In that one, the next one week from there, I won. I won $50,000, two years contract with Elite. And they asked me at the age of 14 to move to New York City. And all of a sudden, my mom, from being excited about modeling, and she's like, oh my gosh, everybody knows me too, you know? And all of a sudden, she said to me, no, you're too young. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go to New York City. No, nobody else in Indonesia ever been there in modeling world, no. And I'm like, mom, I want to be the first. No one else, yes, but I want to be the first. Now you're already, you know, you're already supporting me this far. I want to go more. I want to, I want, mom, you don't understand, please. Okay, let me just try for one year. And my request was granted. I say for six years. <laughs> the reason why I really, really want to do modeling, because it changed my life from being an underdog all of a sudden, being a person who everybody knows, not only in school, but in my city, in Bali. It's for the first time, people, I feel people love me, people respect me, people want to be my friends. All of a sudden, I have so many friends. All of a sudden, when I'm waiting in the restaurant, I don't have to stay in the line anymore. They're like, oh, Mbak Tracy, oh, come in, come in, come in. And then, you know, like, they will call my name, and even without me, introduce myself to them. And all of a sudden, my face in the newspaper, in the magazines, in a TV commercial, and people, reporter come to, the, to, the, uh, to school to follow me with a camera. It changed everything. I'm like, wow. I like being famous at that time. Okay, imagine 14 years old, like just suddenly being different in, 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 in just a few weeks. So I thought, if only I'm much more famous than this, I'll be happier. Because for the first time, people love me. For the first time, people care about me. Then the second thing is that my mom is actually quite stingy. I think she has, okay, no offense to Chinese, but I'm Chinese. I have a Chinese blood. I think it's part, like, like she's so stingy. I remember, like, ugh, pocket money is like half of what other people get. So I have to choose between eating, eating A or B. I can't eat both. And I love eating. <laughs> so I remember the first time I earned my first money. I even buy my friend's meal, like, hey, you guys want some? Okay, okay, just order it, I pay for it, don't worry. I'm like, wow, being independent financially is so good. Like, I feel like I want to have more money. I feel like if I have more money, if I have wealth, I'll be happier. So at the age of 14, I established my worldview, I established my philosophy of life. To be happy is to be rich and to be famous, done. That's what I pursue for the rest of my life. I promise you, I didn't even discuss this with my parents. Because, see, my parents are very, my friend thinks my parents so cool. My dad is a surfer boy, and my mom's a designer. And I mean, we spend our holiday on the beach, like, you know, like swim or surf and stuff like that. But at home, we never talk about anything about faith. We never pray. We never go to church. We know there's not even notion of God have been mentioned since I was a kid, since I was seven until 14. So 
I don't know anything about um, Christianity from my parents. And the second thing is that we don't talk about money. We don't talk about life. So when they allow me to go to New York City, is they actually basically trusting me to just for one year to try what actually life are like in New York City for me personally. At the age of 14, moving to like almost 15, I moved to New York City. Okay, this is like a short story what, what happened. Anybody have watched the movie Home Alone? The second one in New York City. See, I love, you know, I love the movie from Homeland 1 and Homeland 2. I didn't, no, I'm like, no, no, there's no two men chasing me, okay? Like, it's nothing to do something, it's not, it's nothing to do like that. Like, it's not like that. But what happened that, since when you fly from Jakarta or Bali to New York, you actually, like, like you arrive on the same day, even though you flew for 22 hours. Because they're, like, 12 hours in the front of us. So, so what happened is that, as I arrived in New York City, nobody picking me up, like, because they thought I'll arrive the next day. So for three days, I was in the hotel, like, jumping around, you know, eating, like, ordering, like, um, food from um, room service and stuff like that. It was so much fun. <laughs> and, my, and I'm scared to call my mom because I don't want her to, like, okay, get to the next plane, come back home. Like, I don't want that. But I told my agents, and my just said, okay, don't worry, just stay in the hotel, don't do anything crazy. Uh, they will pick you up soon. I imagine modeling world to be very glamour. I will be treated like a superstar because that's what happened in my very first modeling work. Because I won the competitions, I feel special. Like people treat me special. That's not the case. What happened is that I have to do auditions. Like you know, like and imagine this: to get one job. Okay. From 100 audition that you go, maximum job that you can get is 10. You know how tiring it is? Because when you come to auditions, like you bring your portfolio and you show it to them and they'll be like, nah, you're too skinny, nah, you're too ugly, mm, weird, the hair's not right, the face is not right. On your face, like, you know, I, and I realized like, wow, no wonder why there is like, you know, my my colleague, like like my modeling colleague, like they are, you know, they're pretty, they have a good body shape, and they have very low self-esteem. Because every day they will hear word they they will they will hear words saying they're not good enough, they're not amazing enough, the hair is not right, the face is not right, the body is not right, and constantly. And I think that's one of the reasons actually they might lose confidence in themselves. But it's easy to look like we have confidence because you can put a modeling face. You are paid to act. So after a year or two of struggling as a model, finally, finally, my time has come. I finally get good jobs. I finally get a modeling job that people dream to have. I was, you know, I was working for a magazine like Elle, Vogue. Um, Marie Claire, and I did fashion show in Paris like Jean Paul Gaultier, Kenzo, Chanel, Lotte Olympica, and some of the things that you saw in FTV earlier short clips. And I travel to in many cities. I live in many cities. I live in New York City. I live in Paris, Milan, Spain, Sydney, Hong Kong, Sao Paulo, LA. I travel for photo shoot to beautiful places like. Bahamas, um, Miami, Las Vegas, Thailand, and countries like, you know, city and countries like that. And my friend back in Indonesia, you know, whenever I called them to say hi, they told me, Tracy, you're so lucky. Oh my gosh, I have to study all day long and you are in the photo shoot or you are in Paris or in Milan on this. Like, your life is so perfect. Gosh, I, was, I envy you. And I'm just like, <laughs> I can't tell them. That every night, almost every night, I have to. I cried on my bed. I cried not because I'm, I, I'm not happy with my life. I supposed to be happy with my life. I earn big money. One day I can get like thousands of dollars for photo shoots. I travel to beautiful places. I met interesting people. I met celebrity that people will see only in the magazines or in movies. I hang out with them sometimes, and yet, every night, I look at the, 
you know, the, the ceiling of my bed like, and wonder, what am I doing? Why I'm not happy? I have basically taste wealth somehow. Maybe not billionaire, but I do have more than enough money. I have taste fame. Because whenever I go back home, people will stop me and people know my name and I'll be in a magazine or newspaper. Why am I not happy? What's wrong? I thought those two things will make me happy. And I feel a sense of emptiness in my heart that nothing can fill. I went shopping, I went traveling, and I remain this sense of emptiness. You know, it's actually it's scary feeling because nothing else can fill that place. Nothing else. One day, I was so tired of this feeling. And I say to myself, what do I have? Or what do I don't have that other people have that can make me happy? I was thinking, and I came up with this one answer. Maybe it's God. I don't know God. I don't even know which God I should believe. I mean, wait, maybe it's God. Yeah, that could be it. Because I saw many people who live a very simple life, they're happy. Because it, it seems like they have a relationship with God. But the question is that I'm from Bali. Majority of the island believe in, a, in may I mention religion here? In Hinduism, my grandpa is Muslim. My grandma is from my mom's side, Christian Protestant. My father's side of family, Catholic. And my boyfriend at the time is uh, Muslim as well. I'm so confused. And at the time, my daughter was into Buddhism. So I'm like, which one? Which one should I believe? Because the way they describe about God is totally different. Because I did my homework. And one day, in my bed, I just say this prayer. Whoever made the world, the universe, and anything in it, please reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. I want to know the real one. The one who truly, truly, truly created the whole world. And you know what happened? Nothing happened. <laughs> but it's not really nothing happened. Because the truth is God's at work in my life in changing me. A few weeks later, my agent called me and asked me, Tracy, do you want to move to Paris? I'm like, yes, yes. I'm, I'm like, maybe I'm bored with New York City. And then I went to live in Paris and I met this girl, she's Indonesian. She studied in Paris. And she told me, hey, let's go to church. After like, after we become friends, okay, and this is not like, just like, came to me like, even before I introduced her name, like, no, 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 we were already good buddy at the time. Like, she introduced, like, she introduced, me to church for the first time. At first, I said to her, like, no, no, on Sunday I sleep. I sleep until like midday or two o'clock. Like when I'm hungry, I wake up and eat. And she insists that I should go to church with her. But knowing this girl, she will never stop until I say yes. I think her parents spoil her too much. <laughs> so I did say yes. I did say yes. And I came to the church, sitting there, very skeptical, just like, okay, what's next? What's going on here? What do I have to send up? What do I have to say and stuff like that? But I don't want to sing. So I observe people, I look around, and look at these, these people. They're simple, nothing so glamour about them. Yeah, the dress is okay, the hair is okay, the face, they don't really put makeup. But why are they glowing? It's not glittery glowing. It's something else I've never seen in modeling world. I'm curious. Why are they so glowing? They look happy. They're simple, but they look happy. I'm curious. I want to know. So every Sunday, I come back with my friend, pretending that I don't really want to go and wait until she begged me. And after some times, I did ask her, like, hey, let's go. What time? Should I come to your place or you pick me up? And, and, and after some times, the Lord changed my friendship. 
I discover my boyfriend cheated on me. I break up from him, mm -hmm. and my friend, this girl, introduced me to many, many Christians. And few of them asked me, Tracy, we're going to make a Bible study. There's one pastor. He, you know, he's so good at responding to people's questions. We can just like get together, like six of us, and ask him every question. Let's just hit him with all the questions, the hard questions. And I'm like, hey, sounds like fun. Because <laughs> I do have lots of questions. So when I went back to Jakarta, I'm from Bali, but I, I traveled in between these two cities. I came to this house, it's um, Uncle Nino Pongawa, like Michael Ramson knows him. And I sat there and then like five, six of us keep asking these pastors hard, hard questions. Like, I, I want to know, like, you know, like why, why I'm here? W what's the purpose of being here? I mean, like, can I really trust, um, you know, that Jesus Christ is really, really what he claimed to be and I asked the question like wait if God is really good why are you suffering in the world like uh, like every Bible study I will always have lots of questions until one of my friends called me like devil devil Tracy the devil and I'm like I'm just skeptic I'm sorry I don't want to believe easily I want to know the answer first but I'm being fair here because not only I asked this pastor I also asked my Muslim friends I also asked you know someone uh, in Hinduism, like who understand Hinduism, I also ask people who understand Buddhism, like people who are quite expert in that area. I ask the same question to these four religion, because I haven't made up my mind into what I want to believe. And and I and with all of these questions, after like almost eight months, I finally realize no one answer my questions better than the way Jesus Christ answering my questions through scriptures through the people who have faith in him who proclaim the word of God who respond to my questions because it's not only touched the mind it also touched the heart many times when they respond to my questions I hold my tears because I don't want to look weak but the answer, it's sharp enough to touch a stone heart of mine. After many months, I realized that what Jesus claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life is true for me personally. I realized that someone loved me so much that he's willing to die on the cross. To redeem me, to renew me, to give me life to the fullness in Him. I don't want to sound very Christian right now to you, but I promise you this. In the modeling world, we've learned about fake things. We learn to fake smile. We've learned to fake laugh, sadness, anything. We are good in acting. In modeling, in the entertainment world, we present product more than it is because we have to sell the product there's so many fake products out there even people who modeling for shampoo their hair can be so thin and in the photo looks so thick make people want to buy the shampoo but the truth is that's not their hair it's extensions and hairspray but what i'm trying to tell you is this when i get to know about christian faith i get to know about the very true there is no fake in it. There is no packaging in it. What Jesus claimed of himself and what other witness about his life is true. Not because I lived 2,000 years ago, but because what happened 2,000 years ago changed my life. He changed my life to the point that through, not instantly, it's a long journey. He helped me to detach myself from earthly gain and start to think about heavenly richness only can be found in Him. How many times in my personal life I really feel miserable for believing in what I know not to be the truth, in products, in beauty, in fame, in wealth. And when Jesus Christ 
reach into my heart and change me from within. He cleans the lens that I can see life in different perspective. If I may say, I used to see just wall of limitations. I used to see just you know person who is being ungrateful. All of a sudden, I see different things. I see there's a loving God who changed my patterns of life, renewed me, and helped me to look at wealth, not for my own gain, but to be a tool for blessing of others. You know, some word that I really like is like, if you have wealth, keep what you need and give to others so they can have what they need. In fame, I'm no longer thinking famous, it's just famous to make me feel like loved by others. No, 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 no. What important is not loved by God. Others will follow. If you're loved by God, people will like you. Because God will change your personality, will change everything about you. That make you likable. People will draw to you and want to be your friends. So fame becomes something that can be used to share the gospel, to be more influenced, and to, to, to be that person who help others to find the truth. So before I come to a close, I want to tell this to all of you. The world will offer you success that is not from the Lord. The success is so selfish about you. So selfish that it will sacrifice others for the sake of you. I really hope none of you in this room will pursue that. I've been on the other side. I've been on the other side and it's not fun. It's so empty. It looks glamour from the outside. It's empty in the inside. But I already turned back, repent. I'm on the other side. I'm a Christian now. The past nine years, the Lord has changed me. 2006, I got scholarship to study at Oxford. For three years, I struggled because I'm not intelligent at all. But the Lord blessed me with ability to succeed. I graduate on time. Not bad number, not amazing, not bad. I went back home to Indonesia tempted to go back to entertainment school. And yet, there is something within my heart that says, serve the Lord. Give your life to Him. So I work in the church as a pastor. I teach and preach. And I work in the Christian organizations. I go to school and I, I teach at undergrads and high school. And my father, who is not a believer until today, I still pray for my parents. One day when I was preaching in Bali, they came to visit. As soon as I went down from the stage, I sat with my dad. He hugged me and he said, there was a miracle. There was a miracle. There was a miracle. I said, dad, what do you mean it's a miracle? That you can talk and you can, I don't know what you call it, preach? How could you do that? You used to be very shy. You used to, you know, you can't really speak clear. And you can do that. I look at him and say like that, that's what Jesus did. He saved people renewed people, change people to be the best version they can be, that no world can offer them. Tonight, I want to close this in a very, very short prayer. But trust this, I've been on the other side. The world cannot change you to be better you, the best version of you. But Jesus Christ can, and only Him can change you to be the best of you.